Hi learners, we're back again to talk about building upon our nature connections. Yesterday I went for a nature walk with the intention to notice new things. During this time of year there are so many changes around us, and sometimes I find myself walking through the trails too fast to notice the small differences around me. There were new buds growing on the spirea bush. The alder trees have new leaves. The salmonberry bushes were bursting with new, brightly colored flowers. On the side of the trail, I noticed a small tree that had a unique growth pattern to it. The branches were only growing facing down the mountain. On the upside of the mountain, the tree was bare. This made me think of balance. Why is this tree not tilting downhill more? It's not a tall tree yet, so perhaps the weight of the tree hasn't had an impact on the angle of growth. For the rest of my nature walk, I, my attention was now being drawn to the unique things, like the holes made by insects and birds on a decomposing trunk. I found a tree that had developed an interesting bump or burl on the side of its trunk. Many questions came to mind. Was the tree sick? Did it have an infection? Did an insect cause it? Was something else in the environment causing it? Or was it a sign that the tree would become a host for some shelf mushrooms? Nurse logs are scattered throughout the forest. I began to notice if there was a pattern to what type of plants and trees tend to grow on a nurse log. Here's one with a huckleberry bush on the left and a hemlock tree on the right. On this next nurse log, I can see salal and huckleberries in the back. Again, salal and huckleberries. And this last nurse log has huckleberries and a hemlock. This makes me think about what other symbiotic relationships we might find in the forest. I noticed a plant that I hadn't seen before on the trail. I wonder how I could identify it. I paused to look closely from different angles. Bird's eye view, worm's eye view, and a 360. I took a picture and then sat down to make a sketch in my journal. I was drawn to the alternating patterning of the leaves. Through all the greenery, hopefully you can see how there's one node on the stem, and then further up, there's another node. The leaves look similar to a scallop shape. I decided to go home and look this one up in one of my field guides to discover that it was called Hairy Bittercress. I love how field guides are organized to help with identification. They break it down into patterns and common themes. This sparked a new idea. I'm going to organize my journal to help me identify other flowers and trees that I might find on my nature walk. I will have a page for trees and flowers that have alternating leaf patterns, one for opposite leaf patterns, and a small section for world, which has three or more leaves for each node. I will make a note to observe the shape of the leaf. Is it spear-shaped, heart-shaped, round, lobed, or needles? Here's a salal plant. It's leathery and shiny looking, almost egg-shaped with fine-toothed edges. The leaf has a simple and alternating pattern. The alder tree, the branches also have an alternating pattern, one branch per node. And the leaves are oval-shaped. The huckleberry bush, it also has an alternating pattern with flowers and berries hiding below the leaves for camouflage. The maple tree was the only example I found today with an opposite branch structure. You can see that two branches come from one node. Patterns were everywhere I looked today. There are so many types of patterns that we can find in nature. Symmetry, spirals, waves, tessellations, cracks, arrays, spots, and stripes. I wonder what kind of patterns we can find tomorrow. Maybe this bracken fern fiddlehead will spark a new investigation into fractals and spiral patterns. Enjoy! <laughs>